Now it is, it is a great honor and my pleasure to introduce Shivani Bala. I, I am very impressed by Shivani because, as she said, we've been here coming to the WCN Expo for 10 years. And I saw Shivani when she came for the first time as a student. And I cannot tell you how impressed I am and how much I admire her because in such a short time, she's been able to accomplish so much. So without any further words, I will let, it, I will let you uh, hear Shivani and enjoy. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for being here for our talk. I'm talking about Iwaso Lions, a lion conservation project um, that together with my team, we run up in Samburu in northern Kenya. The name Iwaso Lions comes from this amazing river, the Iwaso Nyiro River, that snakes its way throughout northern Kenya across Laikipia and Samburu counties. We work in an unfenced area. We work with um, community, it, we work in community conservancies, commercial ranches, and the protected areas as well. Our entire team is monitoring over 300 lions in northern Kenya. And this is the third largest population in Kenya and very, very important for our country. Unfortunately, the reality is in Africa, lions are in serious trouble. There's only about 30,000 lions remaining in the whole African continent. That's a very, very small number. There has been a 90% drop in lion numbers in the last 75 years. The situation in Kenya is just as serious. The last estimate of lion numbers, which was back in 2009, was we had less than 2,000 lions in the whole country. This is a huge concern. It's a huge concern for the government, for the tourism industry, and for conservationists. So what's happening? Why are lions disappearing at such a rapid rate? One of the main reasons is habitat loss. Lions are running out of space, and this is a problem in the whole continent. More people, more livestock, more development means less space for lions. And when this happens, when lions become more and more confined to small, isolated, protected areas, as soon as they try and leave these protected areas, they come into conflict with people. For the local Samburu communities that we work with, their livelihoods depend on their livestock. Their camels, their cows, their donkeys, their goats, that's their livelihoods. They, they mean everything to them. So when a lion who's struggling to move from one place to another is looking for food and comes across a cow or a camel and attacks it and kills it, understandably for the local pastoralist populations, this is, this, this, there's a lot of resentment, there's a lot of anger, and they will go out, retaliate. They will shoot lions, spear them, and poison them. And this is the problem we face in Kenya currently. Loy Rish was a lion that we knew back in 2008. He was a great male. A lot of people think this is a young lion because he has no mane, but it's actually quite common in Samburu to have maneless lions. And we'd been following him for many years. He was the father of many cubs. He had control over two prides in Samburu and Buffalo Springs. He was a very well-known lion. His name in the local Samburu language means strong, brave warrior. And it was such a perfect name for this lion. The community knew him. The tourism industry knew him. He was very well known. But unfortunately, two years ago, Loy Rich started causing a lot of problems. Together with his brother, Gorette, he kept moving outside the safety of Samburu and he'd go outside the protected area and head straight to villages every night. And in three months, he had killed 10 camels belonging to one village. This was a huge loss for that community. They had lost everything. And this, um, this at that time had been an area that we had not been working in. Unfortunately, Loirish was shot dead his head was cut off and burnt. 
This warrior in the picture, Latoye, who is one of our field officers, he was in charge of Loirish. He used to monitor him. And when Loirish was killed, he would sit in our camp every day with his head in his hand saying, they killed my lion. How could they kill my lion? We felt a great sense of loss. But what was quite remarkable is it wasn't just our team that felt that loss. It was the entire community. And we had people from all over coming and saying, we're so sorry about the loss of Loirish. We knew him. He was famous. And we're sorry that he's, he's not around anymore. And for a Samburu person to apologize to another Samburu person for the loss of a lion was unheard of. And it was that point we realized Something's working. Yes, we lost a lion in an area that we hadn't been working in. But the fact that the community has responded in such a positive way, they're so upset about the loss of Loirish, but they're even more determined to protect what we have remaining. We knew something's working. Our flagship program is a program called Warrior Watch. A warrior is a young man aged between 15 to 30 in the Samburu culture. And back in 2010, our field officer, Jenneria, he said, you know, I'm a young warrior, and now I'm involved in conservation, but where are my other age mates? If we want to make a difference in conservation and really stop warriors from going out and killing lions, we have got to bring them on board. Let's engage the warrior demographic. And I said to Jenneria, so that's a great idea. And he created this amazing program, Warrior Watch. We started with five warriors back in 2010. And now I'm really excited to say that over the years, we have expanded. And now we have 16 warriors working across four conservancies in northern Kenya. They go out every day, and they patrol their area. They patrol the landscape. They're, they're having a look at everything that's happening around them. They're providing wildlife security in areas where there was no wildlife security. They are the eyes and the ears in the bush. And it's absolutely essential that this previously neglected group in conservation decision making now comes on board. And that's exactly what has happened. Every time they know lions are in a specific area or any other carnivore, they will go and communicate that message to the herders. This happened just a couple of months ago. A lioness, Naramat, had shown up in an area where there'd been no lions present in 10 years. And Lemen and Jenneria went, and they'd been tracking her, and they came across these goats and two very young girls who were looking after the goats. And they said, Naramat's not far away. You really need to keep an eye on your goats. Let's move away from where she is. And the girls, they were about 14 years old. They'd never seen a lion. They'd never seen tracks. They couldn't believe it. But they listened very quickly, and they said, OK, we're going to move our goats away. And that's what the warriors do. They prevent conflict from ha happening now. They're out there working with herders and just making sure that livestock and lions are kept separate. Some of you might have seen a Samburu warrior or met one, and you will see that they have big knives and belts, and they have a little mirror, and uh, their little toothbrush from the toothbrush tree. Our team of warriors now have GPSs tucked into their belts, pens, data sheets, and they're out there every day collecting data and getting information on wildlife. This is information that we would never have if it wasn't for the warriors. We're able to monitor trends and really try and understand what is happening with wildlife numbers within these community areas. When we started the program, we asked the warriors, you know, you're giving us this fantastic information on wildlife, and we're getting to really understand the patterns in this area. What would you like in exchange for this great information that you give us? And they said, education. We have never had the chance to go to school. We don't know how to write our names. We would really just ap really appreciate this opportunity. So can you teach us? Can you teach us how to read and write? That's what we would like in return. 
So in 2010, we started a Sunday school for the warriors. And it was Jenneria and myself going out every Sunday, teaching them how to read and write. And I'm so proud to say that out of our team of warriors, 14 of them now can all read and write. And <laughs> They're not just writing their names, they're writing animal names in English and Kiswahili. And this year, they've started writing stories about what they see when they're out on patrol. They tell us which animals are coming close to their villages. They're telling us about conflict. They're writing actual stories, and it's so amazing to see this. We evaluated this program a couple of years ago. Monitoring and evaluation is a key component of all our work. Prior to expansion, we did this, and the results were so positive. Not only had the, the community's attitudes towards carnivores been greatly improved as a result of the warriors, but they also felt socially empowered, and this was huge for them. So when this happened, we'd been working with the warriors for a few years. We'd worked with children and elders. There was someone that was feeling a little bit left out. And we definitely heard about it, because they showed up in our camp every day. It was the Samburu women. And they said, where are we in, why are we not involved in lion conservation? We can do just as good a job as the warriors. Please bring us on board and start a school for us, because we also want the chance to be able to read and write. We want to learn how to write our names. And this was the beginning of our program, Mama Simba. Mama Simba means mother of lions. We started a Saturday school for the women. So every Saturday, we're with the women. Every Sunday, we're with the warriors. And I'm very proud to say that the women picked up reading and writing within six months, far quicker than the warriors. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mentelli. She's practicing writing animal names in English and Kiswahili. Parasroy, she's an amazing leader in the Mama Simba program. We've been working with her for a few years now. She came to me early this year and she said, I have nine children, they all go to school. And for so many years, I, I, I knew education was important and I would send them off to school. But every time they came home with their books and would show me what they were doing, I couldn't read, I couldn't understand what they were showing me. I didn't know whether to encourage them, to get angry with them. She says, I just didn't understand. And she said, now, because of the Saturday school, I can see what my children are learning in school. And I can now encourage them and encourage them to do a better job. And that is the power of this education program that we're running together with the warriors and the women. This is our other leader in the Mama Simba program, Mantelli. She's only 23 years old, but so passionate and enthusiastic about her work. And she was the one who really kept coming to our camp every day, saying, please involve me in lion conservation. I can do it. And a week ago, just as I left Samburu to fly to the US, I went to say bye to the Mama Simba ladies. And Mantelli saw me, and you know we'd come out of a very, a very difficult few months in the field, and she said, you know, you look worried. Why are you worried? I'm here. I look after the lions. Don't worry. And she's amazing. She sends us text messages every time there's lions in her area. I didn't even know she could send a text message, but suddenly my phone's beeping away almost every day with messages from her. And the last thing she said to me is, make sure you give me your, your telephone number in America so I can text you about the lions. She's an incredible lady who also runs our Beaded Lion program. And this is a program that we've only been running for about a year. The ladies under Mantelli's leadership have been making these great little lion figurines. And a lot of the ladies we work with are actually widows. And this, the income they get from selling these beaded lions really helps them send their children to school, helps them get food for their families, especially in a year like this one, where we've had a severe drought in Kenya. We do have a lot of beaded lions on our table. Please, I encourage you all to support the Mama Simba ladies and go buy the beaded lions for them. It goes directly back to them and makes a huge difference in their lives. So we did a lot of conservation training with the women. As we started the program, the women said, you know, for a long time, we've been disconnected from wildlife. 
But in our culture, our beliefs, we do actually believe that all wildlife belongs to us anyway. So now through the Mama Simba program, we're now engaged in conservation. And that we're really excited about. So teach us. But the one thing they said to us is, you know, although we're learning about tracks and, you know, we're providing you with information on which animals are coming up to our villages, we've never seen these animals. They live outside Samburu, which is the mo one of the most famous parks in Kenya, and they've never been inside. They've heard lions, they've seen the tracks of lions coming close to the villages, but they've never actually seen one. So they said, please take us on safari. Show us these animals. <laughs> so here are all the ladies on one of our first safaris a couple of years ago. We've now done a number of them. But the first safari we took them on, it was quite amazing. We saw, you know, we got to see lions, and as we were watching lions, we got a call that something amazing was happening. An elephant was being born. And we rushed over with the ladies, and we got to see, so I've lived in Samburu for 13 years, and I'd never seen this. And here we were with 32 Samburu women watching an elephant give birth. And it was amazing. It, what a moment, and what a way to start the Mama Simba program. But what was even more special is the ladies who were sitting in our vehicles, as, the, as this was taking place, they started talking to the elephant. They started talking to her saying, we know we had a fight with you many years ago. We know our relationship is broken, but now we're, trying, we're gonna change that. We understand you're in trouble. We know there's a lot of difficulties with wildlife, but now wildlife have come back to us, and we're gonna work really hard to make sure you're safe. And this is what was happening just as, you know, as this birth was taking place. What a moment, and what a way to start the Mama Simba program. Of course, word spread that yes, and we had taken the women out and seen an elephant give birth, and we had community members from all over say, take us on safari, take us on safari, we need to see elephants give birth. <laughs> we have done many safaris, but unfortunately, we've not seen that again. What I love about this program and the Warrior program is this is about engaging these, the, the community, inspiring them, educating them. This is not just about providing benefits to the communities to encourage them to conserve. This is about making conservation a way of life. And this is what we've actually created in our programs. This was well illustrated a couple of months ago when the ladies came to me and said, we want a uniform. We need to show the world and show everyone in Samburu that we're doing lion conservation. And they pushed us. They were in our camp every day saying, please, Give us something with a lion on it. And so we made these great big red colored cloths for them, which are called kikois. And we gave it out to the women. And as you should have seen the faces on these ladies when we gave these out. This is Rebecca. As soon as she got it, she put it on. She paraded all the way in her village, showing everyone that she was a Mama Simba lady. They're so enthusiastic about their work. And it's such a great honor to work with these incredible ladies and the warriors. Children in rural Kenya, unfortunately, have very negative experiences of wildlife. I was very lucky as a child. I was born and raised in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. And my parents took me on safari a lot. And, you know, I, I was just so fortunate that they would do that. When I was eight years old, I saw my first cheetah, and it happened to be in Samburu. And I have never, ever forgotten that first childhood memory of mine. And that is why I do what I do today. It's because of that incredible childhood experience I had with wildlife, and especially that cheetah. Based on this, based on these experiences I had as a child, we developed our program, Lion Kids Camps. We started this program a couple of years ago. We've now had 122 children come through our camps. They come and spend four days with us. They go on game drives, they go on bird walks, they get involved in all sorts of conservation activities and games and lessons. And they get to see their first lion. 
And these are children who live right outside Samburu. They live on the park boundary and they've never seen a lion. They've seen the remains of a camel after a lion's killed it. They've seen an elephant chasing someone. They've seen a cheetah chasing their goat. There's nothing positive about these experiences. So we change this through our Lion Kids Camp program, and we take them out, we show them animals, and give them a positive experience. They are the future. They are the future conservationists, and it's an essential that we invest in these kids. A couple of months ago, we decided, let's bring all the kids back. Let's, ha let's see them again, see what they're up to, and just reinforce that conservation message. I have to say, we were very nervous. I was like, how are we going to bring 120 kids to our camp for four days? But we managed. And these kids didn't stop talking about their experiences. They said, this is what we've been doing since the last kids' camp, and I have stopped my community from going out and killing dick dicks and putting poison out. These kids have changed their families and their communities. Based on this amazing reunion that we had in August, I'm very excited now to make an announcement about our Lion Kids Camp program. We will be taking this program to a national level in January 2017. And <laughs> over the next year, we'll be looking for a bus, a big red lion bus that's going to be mobile. We're going to travel across Kenya and work with children, work with projects and schools and partners, and really inspire them and engage them in conservation, show them their first animals, get them to want to be the next conservationists. It is their responsibility. I am Kenyan and I feel that responsibility. And that's what we want to instill in all these children in Kenya. And there's no one that really illustrates this better than this little boy here, Junior. Junior was at our first Lion Kids Camp a couple of years ago, and he was only 10 back then. And at the end of the Kids Camp, his face lit up. He said, you know what? I'm going to be a conservationist. I'm going to be just like Janaria. I want to be a warrior protecting lions. And we said, all right, Junior, we're going we're gonna to work with you on this. But we didn't have to work hard. This kid is pretty amazing. We call him the Lion Kid. And he, he's a little bit, he, he kind of stalks Janaria now. Every time, he, every time he sees Janaria drive into the park, he knows Janaria is going to be coming back out in the evening. And he stands in the middle of the road with his school bag. He puts his hands out and he says, Janaria, stop, take me to camp. And that's exactly what he's been doing for the last three months. And he's never really left. <laughs> he lives in our camp and Janaria is his hero. It's, he's his mentor. And who Junior is the most amazing mentor. And he is working with Junior. We've already spoken to Junior's parents saying, Junior wants to be a conservationist, and we're going to do everything in our part to make sure he is going to be one. And that's what we want to do with our Lion Kids camps. Inspire them, mentor them, encourage them to be the next Junior. Our work is extremely difficult. The challenges we face feel overwhelming at times, especially in the last two months. Jenneria and I and our field team, we have not stopped in the field. We are out there every day making sure that lions are safe. Livestock are kept away. If there's any sick or injured lion, we're there treating it. So if you ask me, is there hope for northern Kenya despite all these challenges? I am optimistic. Despite these challenges and the hardships we face every single day in Samburu, there is hope. And you know what gives me hope every single day? It's this amazing team that I work with. A young team of Samburu warriors mainly, who are out there every day risking their lives to protect lions. They make sure that lions are safe, cows are kept separate. And who do they have as their leader? The most amazing young man, Jenneria. Jenneria is only 27 years old. He's been working with me for eight years. Previously, he was very quiet. Now he talks a lot, for some of you who know him. And Jenneria said, uh, about a year ago, he said, you know what? Lions are now my life. 
They're my cows. I'll tell you what he did in August. We unfortunately, we had five very sick lion cubs and we lost two. That was terrible for us. Every single lion matters to us. They're all individuals. They all have a role to play. And when we lost two, there were three more, but they were very sick. And they had gone down a, a very deep warthog hole. And Jenneria and Latoye stood there, parked in their car, and guarded those three cubs for two and a half days. Not in a very good area. They risked their lives to make sure those lion cubs were, kept, were okay and no one would disturb them. Because of them, the three cubs survived. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a real hero who in the last week has actually received two awards, Disney's Conservation Hero Award and Houston's Wildlife Warrior Award. There's no one more deserving than Jenneria Lekilele. It gives me an honor to introduce you to him. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Yes, good evening everyone. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for everyone who have really stayed the whole day <laughs> waiting to hear and share my great stories back at the field. I just want to mention a few things in my, my work about the warriors who are known to be called killers of the, warriors, uh, the lions. They are known for killing of lions, and now they are known for conserving lions. My team have really tried to save lions. We are there all the day with my team, spending however much time that lions require to be safe. If it is night, you are there. You wake up at 4, up to 10 o'clock. So whenever lions cause any problem, you are in the problem. And this great team here that I'm working with have really dedicated themselves with lions. I've given all my livestock, all my everything to my brothers. I sacrificed all my life to the lions and my great team of warriors. And to be known for, like, you know, killing of lions, to conserve lions, and really be there to protect lions and changing other warriors' minds towards conservation. And now I'm very, you know, happy to see Latoye drawing lions and knowing, even me, like knowing of uh, those, you know, 50 lions of Samburu, plus like keep your lions, every individual lions. And Latoye, for the first time, he said, how can I know uh, the difference between this lion and this lion? You know, I've known to kill this, to be known like a brave warrior, but how can I do it? I'll show you. You know, I took him uh, to the field. Few days, Latoye doesn't want even to go off. We are there. We said, okay, let's walk. We walk there. We come across very difficult situations, whereby you come across with one person, one cow, have one cow in his life, that's what he depends on, and the lion kill. You have to bring that person down, you have to calm him down, to really make him to think wider. How much? Do we need lions in here? People also doesn't know, you know, why they need lions in their home area. Even myself, I didn't know. You know. But lions, if you speak to the elders now, you'll, you'll realize that there's so much going on. Lions have disappeared. And we can't do many things without lions in our tradition. And these our warriors are dedicated every day, you know, making sure that, you know, the lions are safe. Despite all the problems that we are facing in the field, you know, risking our life, you know, myself, I still have a very strong hope for lions conservation in the northern side of Kenya because of us, the community. My community have owned the lions. If the community are apologizing for losing one lion, I'm telling you, there's nothing else I want, <laughs> you know. 
ಅಕ್ಕ ಸಂಬೂರು ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಸಂಬೂರು ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ನೆವರ್ ಸೇ ಇನ್ನೋ ಸಾರಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇವೆನ್ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಸಾರಿ ಇಫ್ ದೇ ಡನ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಯು ಟು ಸೇ ಸಾರಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೊರೇಶ್ ಯು ನೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಗಿವ್ ಮೀ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ಯು ನೋ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ಯು ನೋ ಯು ನೋ ಟು ಗೋ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಹೆಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ವರ್ಕ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ಲೋನ್ಲಿ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ಸೋ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಯು ನೋ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಕಿಲ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಕಿಲ್ ಮೀ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಆಂಗ್ರಿ ವಿತ್ ಮೀ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಹೇರ್ ಸೀ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇನ್ ದ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಗಿವ್ ಮೀ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅವ್ರು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸೇ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಬೈ ಸೈಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೀ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಮಿಸ್ ಯು ದಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಅ ಯೂಜ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ವಿತ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ಕೆನ್ಯ ಫಾರ್ ಲಯನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಜನರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ Despite the challenges we face this year, we have had some amazing highlights and I want to end by um, telling you about a few of them. For eight years, we lived in a very simple camp. We didn't really have roofs over our heads. We had no water, no power, no, basically nothing. But thanks to WCN, we've now moved into a permanent camp in Samburu. We are up high on, on a hill and it's an incredible change in our lives. To come back from 14-15 hours a day in the field, to you know, be able to switch on a light in our tent and have running water gives us enough strength to continue the next day. So this new camp has been amazing for us. We celebrated the opening of the camp with 400 community members who came and said, here we are, we, we know Iwaso Lions is here to stay. We know all of you are here and we're here to support you. What an amazing day for us it was when we opened our new camp. I have to show you a picture of our camp dog. He's called Kura. Some of you might have met him. His name means vote because we rescued him on our elections day. He looks a bit miserable here because this was moving day. And Kura did not want to move from the old camp to the new camp. Um, but I'm really happy to say, six months later, he's a very happy dog. He settled down. As we are out there protecting lions, he is our little lion protector. He's an incredible little guy and keeps us very well entertained. So he settled down in our new camp. We've had 16 cubs born this year and our population is stable and that's a great success for the area. All the cubs are doing well. But perhaps the biggest highlight for us is the return of lions to community areas. For a long time, lions would move from the protected area of Samburu, go outside to the community areas, but then always go back in again. But over the past year, we've seen a change. We now have lions that are permanently resident outside the safety of the protected areas. And this is a great example, this female Naramat. She used to come in and out all the time, but now she lives where there's a lot of people. There's over 5,000 people living in this community area, but there she is, living there with them, coexisting with them. She gave birth this year to two cubs, again in the community area. And we know something's working. For a lioness to come and live outside permanently, We know the community's attitudes towards carnivores have been improved. We know they're tolerating the presence of carnivores. And because of that, lions feel safer. And how do we know that? In the past year, we have finally started hearing lions at night. For so many years, lions would walk in and out of the community areas, but be very, very quiet. And now, we can hear them calling out at night. And we know something is working. <laughs> I ask you today to please join us. Join us on this journey of lion conservation. We are having a huge impact. Our team of 34 are out there every day making sure lions are safe and stopping people from killing lions. Just in the last few months, our team has stopped warriors from going out to attack lions 10 times. 
We are in the field every day. If you've been to Samburu, and I encourage you all to come to Samburu because it's absolutely beautiful, the chances are you will find me, Jenneri, and Latoye in our little Suzuki, bouncing along, making sure our lions are okay. Join us. I ask you to please support us and help us continue to make conservation a way of life in Samburu. Thank you very much. <laughs>